Hey everybody, Clay Archer, and today we're going to do a quick review of the Zite CS306 CF Express Type A to SSD adapter. It says it's specifically for the FX6 and Sony A7S3, although I'm assuming it'll work with the new Sony Alpha 1. So let's get right into it. This actually came all the way from China. We kind of pre-ordered it on their website, and uh, it is pretty well packed here. It's a pretty simple little unit. It's got basically a metal heat sink, it's pretty well built, and a CF Express Type A adapter to it. And we got the recommended Samsung Evo 970 Plus SSD. It was actually the one that was listed on the website, so that's the one we tried. And it is uh, 512 gigabytes. Should be a pretty simple process of just taking the small SSD, putting it inside of the housing. Really easy, we're just removing these little three little screws in the back. We're just popping in the SSD, which pops into a nice little enclosure there. And then we're screwing down the uh, the retention screw. A nice little heat sink here, it's pretty well built. I would give this a thumbs up as far as build quality and ease of install. Uh, you are gonna need a small little screwdriver, um, and that pretty much is it to do this install. You may be asking yourself, why would you go through the trouble to have this big old external reader? The real reason is that this CF Express Type A, a 80 gigabyte card is $200, uh, and the 160 gigabyte is $400. This unit is about $160, but the internal SSD you can size to whichever size you want. So this is a 500 gigabyte SSD, but you could do a terabyte, two terabytes or whatever. As the size gets bigger, obviously the cost, the marginal cost per gigabyte is going way, way down versus the uh, CF Express. Now, obviously this is a brand new card and uh, it's only been out for maybe six months and the prices will come down on this. But for now, uh, the real compelling reason is that you can get a larger storage size for a lot less. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this to the tripod mount on the bottom of this camera. I would say that most people that are gonna be doing this kind of adapter probably are gonna have a cage or something along those lines so that you could mount this to a bread plate on the side of that. That might make that a little bit less cumbersome. You can see it's pretty simple mount there. I'm gonna go ahead and take out the SSD card. So this is the only card in here. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in slot one to do some testing. Now, obviously um, your, your door's not gonna shut. So, you know, this is gonna probably be for somebody that's gonna put this on a tripod, you know, really use this in production for some amount of time. Obviously 500 gigabytes there is gonna give us a ton of storage time. Um, it says unable to use memory card in slot one format. And I'm gonna go ahead and format that. All data will be deleted, I'm good with that. It's good for a sign that it is working and it will quickly format that card. All right, so that, that format maybe took 30 seconds. It was not a very big time frame there. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and I'm gonna try and test the camera in some different modes here. I've actually got it under my quick menus here. I'm gonna go to movie settings. I'm gonna go to file format, uh, basic settings for me, you can da da And I am gonna go, I'm gonna go 4K, uh, assign, and I'm gonna go into, Frame rate is 60, and I'm gonna go record. I cannot record in this movie in this setting. Switch to a movie card, a higher XD. That is that dreaded. This card does not work in that mode. So that is no bueno. Well, let's go ahead and see what other movie modes we can or cannot shoot in. That's 600 megabits per second, 422, 10-bit in 60 frames a second. I'm gonna go down to 30 frames a second there, which is 300 megabits, 422, 10-bit. Let's see what we get there. Cannot do that either. Um, so I'm gonna go back into the menu and I'm gonna go 24 frames a second and see if we can do that. That's 240 megabits per second, 422, 10-bit. And it does not do it. Looks like it tried, but then it just doesn't do it. So let's go back into file format here and we're gonna try XVACS 4K, and then we'll go into this movie settings here, and we will do uh, 120p, which is 200 megabits 420, and it won't do that either. Files are struggling with pretty much everything. I'm gonna go down to 60 frames a second, see what we get there. This is 150 megabits per second, 420 and it recorded that. So I think that 200 megabit per second is probably gonna be about where its limit is. I'm gonna go back in here, 
and I'm gonna go to 120 frames a second there, which is again 200 megabits 420 10-bit. And I'm gonna go okay there and cannot do it. Now if I go back down into, oh, it didn't. I'm an XAV uh, HS 4K at 200 422 10 bit but honestly, it really doesn't make much sense to do that because you would just just can do that with SD cards relatively easily. So, I mean, really the only advantage of this is going to be that you're just getting huge recording, you know, drives. So you can go to terabyte or two terabytes if you were going to record quite a bit. That's rather disappointing that it, it's not able to do anything that's above 200 megabits per second there, uh, which is pretty much I think the use case scenario for this piece of equipment. Uh, I'm just really gonna quickly gonna read you what it says on the website as its parameters. It's saying that it can read at 800 megabits per second and write at 700 megabits per second. It also, you know, specifically says it's for the A7S III and FX6, but I'm not seeing that that's gonna work uh, well. So it says specifically for Sony FX6 and A7S III cameras. I'm gonna go back into the office and I'm gonna do some read speeds and I'll tell you what those are really quickly. All right, so pretty interesting findings there. Both the uh, SD adapter and the CF Express card were very similar. The CF Express Type A to SSD adapter was just a little tiny bit faster. I would say it was about 10% faster in read and write speeds, just above 400 on read and about 300 on the write and about 10% slower on the card, uh, right at 400, a little bit below 400 on the read and a little bit slower even still on the high twos on the write both blazing fast. I mean, honestly, the, these, this card and this adapter, the Sony adapter are super duper duper fast. It's awesome. I don't think the limitation here is in the unit itself. I think it's in the camera. It's just seeing the card and saying, uh -uh, I don't want to do this. I think the, the card has the capability to do it. Um, as far as it's read and write speeds, I just think that there's something in the in the camera's firmware that's saying, I don't want to write to it. Hey guys, I just was editing the video and I wanted to make a couple clarifications. First of all, before Zite uh, shipped me the item, they did reach out and said they were having some trouble with the higher bit rates. Um, and they offered me a discount to send it to me. I think the discount was $25, but they ended up giving me $50 off of it. Um, I told them to go ahead and ship it. I will tell you now on their ordering form, it does have a, a little remarks area that says this uh, CF Express Type A SSD adapter does not support V60, V90, VPG200, VPG400 certification. Uh, can't record all I format videos. Uh, maximum record speed is 4K 60p format. So uh, they are letting you know on on the website now. I didn't want to uh, uh, give the illusion that they sent it to me without uh, clarifying those things. But anyways, back to the video. Before I thought, hey, this might be something that we could use on a daily basis, especially if we're doing longer shoots. But for here, if you are if you want any of the higher quality 4K, higher bit rate, anything over 200 megabits and, and really at 200 megabits and above, I don't think this is gonna be right for you. So I'm a little disappointed. Uh, I kind of took one for the team there. I did a little bit of an experiment with it. I wanted to see if it was gonna be the way to get a high memory storage uh, and, and really drop that price per gigabyte down. Um, but unfortunately, unless you are going to uh, film under 200 megabits per second, I don't think this is the right uh, unit for you. I hope you enjoyed this. If this is the kind of video that you like, please like and subscribe. If you have any other comments, you want to test anything else out with the unit, please put them in the comments down below and we'll see you in the next one.